Shit. What's up, my curry gang, gang, gang? I'm going to get right in this bitch. In case you've been living under a rock, comedians Monique and D.L. Hewley been arguing and taking shots at each other back and forth on Instagram. Reportedly, Monique aired out D.L. on one of her comedy shows in Detroit for hating because she had a contract stating she was the headliner over D.L. on the show. While she personally attacked him, calling the Wax Museum looking Negro down low Hewley because he bent over his dookie highway to jumpstart his career. Let me say it again. The headliner. That's what the mother contract says. Monique is to be the last mother person on the goddamn stage. She is the headliner. That's what I signed before. I'm 30 plus years in this mother business and I don't open for no goddamn body. The contract says the headliner. The contract says the headliner. The contract says the headliner. But a nigga named Dale Hughley turned into a bitch and said I won't perform if she does that. Nigga, you open for the kings of comedy. I close for the queens of comedy, nigga. But DL denied it and said he was the headliner, and he can prove it based on the order of the names on the tickets, while Monique told him to shut the f*** up, because she had proof with an actual contract. This is what Monique said on her most recent post, and I quote, The fact that you point the people to the ticket stubs for the order of the names versus to your contract implies that you don't have a contract that shows you're the headliner, like I do. Either show your contract or be quiet. Stop messing with people who have never messed with you and who once considered you a comrade in comedy. But I thank you, DL, because you're the reason why I fight for my people like I do. Anytime you open for the kings of comedy, and I was the headliner for the queens of comedy, and you think you should close the show over me is a prime example of the bias that black women have to deal with in this business. I won't even discuss awards. I love us for real. And there you have it. She <laughs> Why am I starting to feel like these two niggas is in cahoots together and created this fake heated exchange to sell more tickets? Hmm. Y'all think I'm reaching Curry Gang? Hmm. Well, here's my conspiracy theory. Will Smith smacks Chris Rock, right? And then Chris Rock ticket sales explode. A random man attacks Dave Chappelle on a Dave and Buster Rhymes comedy tour and then their tickets explode. Now we got Monique going in on DL and DL snapping back. Let's see where their ticket sales go from here, Curry Gang. Truth be told, this shit just fucked up my mind. Losers, slackers. So if you've been following along on our channel, you'll see the two Negroes arguing back and forth on social media about what their contracts say, which resulted in DL posting a document on his Instagram label, Dill Memo. So as you can see in Download Hughley's memo, it says he's to be paid the highest for the show at the Fox Theater in Detroit on Saturday, May 28th, 2022, and also states he will be closing the show. This prompted DL fans, along with some of his comedy comrades like Gary Owens and Kim Whitley to respond, basically reacting to DL's supposed receipts. But then Monique responded back with a document of her own, showing evidence of her headlining the same show at the Fox Theater in Detroit on the same day, May 28th, 2022. The document was labeled Performance Agreement, which stated Monique is to perform a 30-minute to 45-minute set as the headliner, following a document titled Schedule Displaying D.L. Hewley going before Monique closes out the show. Monique writes in the caption of her Instagram post saying, and I quote, there were some of you who were fooled by the smoke and mirrors of DL posting his deal memo versus his performance agreement. Here is my performance agreement, and here are the emails and texts confirming that as per usual, I'm going to always keep it real and honest with my people. If you notice, mine has signatures, and DL does not. What type of ironclad agreement doesn't have the signatures of the participants involved? Apparently DLs. Laugh out loud. Now you told me to check with my management and this is what I came up with. So how did I do? 
Perhaps you should have taken your own advice because I'm sure your team would have advised you against trying to pass a deal memo off as a contract. To those out there who thought a deal memo was the same as a performance agreement, especially some of the comedians, this is how we're constantly taken advantage of by the business. And just so you know, the promoter already told my team before the show that you didn't have a signed agreement. That's why I'm not surprised you're using a deal memo. That said, maybe they lied and you actually have a contract. If so, the promoters put themselves in a terrible position to have more legal action taken against them, beyond malicious concealment for breaking a contract at the last second. That said, DL, we the people, will be waiting for your signed agreement. Number one, my contract signed. Number two, email with PDF of run of show. Three, run of show. Four, additional email with ROS. Five, what I walked into minutes after arriving to the theater. Can you say receipts? Laugh out loud. To my people who refuse to fall for the okie doke, and even those that do, I love y'all too. Life. Hold on, hold on, Curry. Let me chime in. DL just responded against Monique's contract. He posted it on his page with a caption underneath saying, Man, Hicks Media ain't. Hold up. That's you. You really showing everyone the contract you submitted from your own company? I smell bullshit. And I wouldn't pick it up with the old ass birth certificate paper it was written on. Stop the cap. Again, my contract. Headliner. Highest paid artist on show. Artist to have approval of lineup. Lineup of the show. DL Hughley closing. Now explain to me how much it was delivering yours, was it? Sounds to me like your problems with Hits Media ain't. Can we please implement the three knockdown rule? Daryl and Hughley. And there you have it. She he 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 he. It seemed to me Monique and DL got promised the same thing, but Monique took the initiative to get it in writing with signatures from her lawyer team as well as the promoter's team. But to be honest, Curry Gang, why is this even news? And what are we being distracted from as these two already rich Negroes bicker over some rich nigga problems that us average broke Mickey Fickies won't even understand anyway? Because we ain't worrying about how we gonna fill up our gas tanks for work when a gas a gallon is damn near six dollars. Or the fact that the grocery stores are barely restocking in food and the food prices are going through the goddamn roof. Yeah, we still worried about rich niggas contracts and shit. And I know, I know, I'ma get Negroes in the comments like, then why are y'all reporting on the thing? You ain't got that reporting on it. You the one giving it in, you reporting on it. Cause that's all you niggas click on. Look, Burger King can only keep serving what their customers are buying. If people stop buying a goddamn filet of fish sandwich from BK and they continue to sell it, they will go out of business. That's why they took on a business model, the customers is always right. And even when they wrong, they right. Because the customers are the only reason why they still have jobs. Now to all you slow Mickey Fickies in the back. Do you get it? Do you get it? We have to continue to create what y'all seem to be interested in. Or we cease to exist as a channel. Now we got plenty of videos on this channel that has solid uplifting information talking about real issues like the economy, spirituality, health, our future as black people, etc, etc, etc. Now I mean the views on them real types of videos are lower than Diddy Love and Down Low Hewley dropping it like it's hot on a goddamn human eggplant, but they're there. So go click on them and watch them shit. <laughs> and don't be such a loser. Slugger. To be clear, I'm talking about our informative videos, not the Diddy Live, 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 and Download Hughley booty popping to maintain their careers videos. <laughs> now let's not get that confused. On the real though, Curry Gang, all this shit just fucks up my mind. Oh, losers. Slackers. Comedian Monique is at it again, going in on fellow comedian D.L. Hewley on her IG page, this time calling him out for not only not protecting black women, but attacking him through non-funny comedic bits he did on an old late night show with Jay Leno. In case you missed it, here's the clip. And then let's face it, you know, he called them hoes, uh, uh, navigated hoes, and, and they weren't hoes. 
but it was some nappy-headed women on that team. <laughs> Shut up, I'm gonna say it, I don't give a damn, y'all like it or not, you know it's true. Them is some of the ugliest women I ever seen in my whole life. Oh. <laughs> Under the caption of the clip, Monique says this. Hey, my sweet, 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 oh, so delicious sugary babies. Tell me what part of what he said was funny. This is a classic D.L. Hughley. Cruel for no reason. The only thing that I ask to some black woman is how do you protect a black man who not only won't protect you, but he'll recklessly attack you too. At real D.L. Hughley. I love us for real. We at Night and Day Network can assure you this message was officially authorized by Monique's hubby daddy, Sidney Hicks. Well, everyone don't agree with Monique and feel like what DL said was taken out of context. To run a smear campaign and false narrative to make him look like a womanizing prick. Because there's also clips online showing DL Hewley praising black women. So what Monique said about DL attacking black women based on a small clip is null and void. In fact, we found an old clip of DL Hewley shouting out black women on his podcast and giving them praises. In case you missed it, here's the clip. You have to be proud of the way that black women have comported themselves. And I think we as black men could learn so much from them. They are on the brink at, of the seat of power. We have asked for a seat at the table. They are making one, their own table, and not with bellicosity, and not with arrogance, and not with saber rallying. They are doing with insistence and grace, and they're going to have it their way. They are insisting the most disruptive uh, constant force in the world is water. All the time you think it's standing still, it is changing the whole landscape, and that is exactly what they're doing. Um, it, it always flummoxes me when I ever hear, hear people talk about the condition of black people, as if black women aren't part of that. When you look at black women, they're the most erudite, the most, uh, the, the most uh, prosperous, the most educated segment of our society, aren't they black too? Mm -hmm. And right now, they're on the brink of making the most, po potentially the most powerful man in the world, pick one of them as a running mate, and not for any other reason other than if the country got in trouble, this is the one who would run it. This is the most important president, vice presidential pick in decades. And specifically, it is because of black women's insistence and power. They vote consistently at the highest levels in the country. They ask and demand and now are getting what they want. And I'm telling you, we as black men could learn a lot from them. They have had the same fights we have, and they persevered. They have had some some worse things than we have, and they persevered, and they are making a way, and it is awesome to see. This is the truest example I've seen in a very long time of black girl magic. You better do what they say. Sound like your mama, don't it? <laughs> don't it? it? It is the insistence and grace and persistence that all of us could take a lesson from. They are changing the landscape as we speak, and they are doing it almost without a ripple. You're not hearing uh, people arguing. You're not hearing, uh, the, you know, articles and, and magazines and rumblings. They are just there consistently, and they know that they are due, and they're going to get what they want. And I am so proud of you. I'm proud of the way that you have comported yourself. I'm proud of the way you've had the, uh, the, the, uh, your, hair, your hair tie. I am proud of the way you are leading. You are leading. And I, as a man, and I, and I know a lot of other men feel the same way, and proud to watch you, and we hope that we learn from you and we can take your place. We hope that you teach us how to do what you've done because it's all there, and it is amazing. And I think in history, no one's ever seen it before. So take your bow and, and be as gracious as you've always been, and hopefully we'll be saying Mrs. Vice, Mrs. Vice President pretty soon because of your insistence. Bravo, ladies and gentlemen. And there you have it, my sweet loves and my sweet babies. This situation getting messier than a goddamn diaper filled with shit worn by a sweet baby. Oh, the irony, Curry Gang. The irony. So what y'all think, Curry Gang? Y'all team D.L. Hewley or team sweet, 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 oh so delicious sugary babies? Let me know in the comments below.
Oh, and make sure y'all like this goddamn video if you effing with our content. The DL Hewley and Monique drama series continues. Now, we all know DL's oldest daughter is now in the mix, calling out Monique to meet face to face for attacking her family. Well, Monique just recently responded to DL's daughter's message while accepting her invitation to meet face to face. On a recent IG post, Monique said, and I quote, Hey, young sister. Thank you for the invitation for a discussion. We would like to take you up on it because it could be very healing for our community. Have D.L. Hewley set up a time for you and your family and my husband and I to come on his show and we will go from there. I love us for real. Well, comedian Corey Holcomb chimed in, basically going in on Monique, saying she wasted her time on stage talking about D.L. because she didn't have no material. In case you missed it, Here's the clip. This bitch disrespects everybody. Mm. Everybody get it from her. Everybody. I was so mad when she did that shit to Charlemagne, and now here it is. All, all between all the people, people always talking about. I see the burnt bridges with this month, burnt bridges with that month. Um, look, ain't none of us perfect in the comedy game, but I'm not finna month spend my time on stage making excuses for not being funny by talking about somebody else. Nope. What, she, what joke she cracked? No, Did you hear her crack some jokes? No, I'm talking about that, that little part about the right whole there. thing. That was the beginning of, of a set, right? So you think she just did five minutes of the shit, huh? <laughs> she didn't have no material, so she went up there, found a way to get through the time by talking shit about DL. Where the jokes, bitch? And the criticism of Monique's conduct didn't stop there. Monique's IG followers also went in on a 54-year-old comedian. An IG handle that goes by the name Latanya Renee 23 says, Can y'all stop already? Acting like kids when y'all the elders. Extra petty. Monique responded saying and I quote, Hey my sweet baby, because I'm an elder is why I have to push forward. I understand why you petty. However, it's principle that we gotten away from principle. I love you to life. Another one of Monique's IG followers who go by the name Precise Chi said this. Love that you accept the invite. This started one way and can end another way. God is in control. Monique responded with the words, that's all I'm saying, my sweet baby. Another one of Monique's IG followers with a fake blue check verification who goes by the name Tiffany Monique says, and I quote, This is the most gaslighting rhetoric I've ever seen. Stop, sis, please. With love and respect, get whoever's in your ear out and stop. Surprisingly, one of Monique's followers who go by the name is Jackie came to her rescue, disagreeing with Tiffany Monique, the fake blue check comment saying, why should she stop? This is her battle, not yours. She hasn't asked you for shit. Someone named AK1985 Keys chimed in on Tiffany's comment about someone being a Monique's heir saying, and I quote, it's her husband. But truly a queen 92, another one of Monique's IG followers disagreed with AK1985 Keys, saying, always blaming a husband. Monique herself responded to Miss Jackie, the one who was defending her, saying, that part, my sweet baby, with the full face heart emoji. Monique's comment section got so bad, she had to ask her daddy if they can go live together to talk to her sweet, sweet, oh so delicious babies. Daddy agreed, and they went live to address the babes. In case you missed it, here's the clip. And we did a post with D.L. Hughley having a conversation about how his daughter was violated from a really good friend of his and at the time, he didn't say anything because he didn't want to jeopardize that relationship with a really good friend and he didn't believe his daughter. We posted that. And then we left the caption under that, pretty much saying, if that black man couldn't put any protection around his own daughter, we know we have nothing coming. Now, once we posted that, the reason why I said, Daddy, can we go do a live? Because I was reading the comments on the timeline. 
and most of them are from black women. And they're saying some, Monique, what does this have to do with your contract? What does this have to do? You're going too far. What does this have to do with your contract? Let me tell you what it has to do with my contract. Not a damn thing. Not a damn thing. It has nothing at all to do with my contract. What it has to do with is the character of the man named D.L. Hughley. That's what this has to do with. And let me acknowledge, D.L. Hughley did apologize. He said he apologized. And y'all are saying, Monique, he owned his mistake. Let me say this to you. Though he owned it, it does not erase the trauma. And there you have it. See? <laughs> They running this into the ground, ain't they, Curry Gang? Milking the shit out of this drama like it's some tig old bitties. So much milk, it can feed a whole army of sweet babies. This shit just fucked up my mind. Losers, slackers. Hey, my sweet babies. To all of y'all. Now, some of y'all in your feelings, and y'all don't want to be my sweet babies right now, but if you in here, hey, my sweet babies. Let's have this conversation. So. And please excuse the background noise. We didn't know when we started this that the yes, that landscape is going to come. Please but, go tell them to stop. We're, we're going to get them to stop, my babies. Because we, we really want y'all to hear this. And yes, this is a homegrown live. This ain't no big production. This ain't with the lights, camera action. This is us sitting in our family room having a conversation with the community. This is us sitting in the family room. Look at it like you in the basement at the auntie and uncle house. Did you tell them that? Thank you, babe. So, let's have this conversation, please. Earlier today, we did a post and we did a post with D.L. Hughley having a conversation about how his daughter was violated from a really good friend of his. And at the time, he didn't say anything because he didn't want to jeopardize that relationship with a really good friend and he didn't believe his daughter. We posted that. And then we left the caption under that pretty much saying, if that black man couldn't put any protection around his own daughter, we know we have nothing coming. Now, once we posted that, the reason why I said, Daddy, can we go do a live? Because I was reading the comments on the timeline. And most of them are from black women. And they're saying some, Monique, what does this have to do with your contract? What does this have to do? You're going too far. What does this have to do with your contract? Let me tell you what it has to do with my contract. Not a damn thing. Not a damn thing. It has nothing at all to do with my contract. What it has to do with is the character of the man named D.L. Hughley. That's what this has to do with. And let me acknowledge D.L. Hughley did apologize. He said he apologized. And y'all are saying, Monique, he owned his mistake. Let me say this to you. Though he owned it, it does not erase the trauma. And when we talk about the character of the individual, for years, for years, D.L. Hughley has given his commentary and his opinion on other people's lives, not just mine, for years. And he would give the ins and outs Oh. We sorry, baby, because, okay, they just must have thought we met just for a second. But hold on, he get ready to shut it down. Stop it. Please. Thank you, sugar. We just getting it taken care of, my babies. Please forgive us for a second. And again, like I said, tag as many as you can because this is a conversation, in my humble opinion, in my humble opinion, that our community needs to hear and wrap our minds around because we're getting caught up in the fluff, y'all. We're getting caught up in the fluff of shit and we're not trying to deal with the facts of shit. We getting, we getting, 
distracted. So when y'all are saying to me, Monique, this is so immature. Monique, this is so wrong. I'll take that. I'll take that. Because when I'm watching our community fall apart at a rapid race, because we're too afraid to have the real conversations, and y'all keep saying, let's do it privately, because we're too afraid to look embarrassed in front of who? In front of who? And we watching us. So for the ones that say, oh, Monique, you could handle this differently, this is my swing at the back. This my swing. This my swing. This is our swing at that bat. So we're gonna take our swing. Thank you, baby. No worries. So let me get back to what I was saying. When you start addressing the character of the man, when you really look into what is happening, when a man says, I was not strong enough to defend my daughter against a really, really good friend of mine because I didn't want to jeopardize the friendship. Though he apologized, you have to ask yourself, what kind of demons is that man dealing with that he couldn't stand up to the predator of his child? Of his child. But that same man goes on his radio show and talks about people as if he was sitting in the meetings, as if he was making their life decisions, as if his opinion mattered in their choices. So when I say, listen y'all, it was important for me, for me, to make that post because there are so many little girls out there with daddies like DL. And let me try to adjust this tough because to well, I can hold it, Daddy. If well, you let's do it. Comments. Let's do no. Okay. Just it's better for them to view. Okay, so let me address it. When y'all are asking me, is it okay to re-traumatize his daughter? Listen, y'all. Let's stop playing this game. There's nothing I could say or do to re-traumatize that baby because the trauma has already set in. However, if we speak it out loudly and we say it to our community, maybe the next baby won't have to deal with the goddamn trauma. See, when I made that post, it was intentional. It was intentional. It was intentional. And let me say this too. When we speak about the character, we don't know D.L. Hughley in the totality to speak about his character, but what we know is about his actions. So what we can say reasonably and factually is that when you have a man that said, essentially, that he didn't do right by his daughter, that seemed to me that it would create a level of humility that you wouldn't go after other people so vehemently in the manner that you do. So that that's the moment when humility steps in and say, I have my own demons to deal with. So moving forward, the way in which I approach and go after people, I will not. You see, when Monique went on his show trying to su support her friend at that time, DL, and she was asked, would you rather your husband sleep with Lee Daniels without a condom or Corinne Stephens with a condom? That is a violation of a woman's whole position because you are violating this black woman as you are violating your community because you're trying to point out this is a person who is this man and this woman here and their implications surrounding both of them that are unsaid, which is why he chose them. But now, like many sisters who have seemingly Stockholm syndrome, you've been captured and fallen in love with the cat tour that's violating you. Because if you're protecting an individual that said, I didn't do right by my daughter, and you're hearing a black woman saying, I went on his show as a friend, but he didn't do right by me. What do you guys think you have coming? What do you ladies think that you have coming? When black men or men tell you that you look like something is wrong, the reason why many of you, something is wrong, because you suffer in silence. And, and please, Daddy, let me address something. When I hear y'all saying, mind your business, 
Did you say the same shit to DL when he talks about everybody's business? See, I didn't put DL's baby out there. It's an interview that's out there. DL told the story. What I did was posted the story to say, look at the character of the man. And that's- Look the, at the actions. The actions of the man. See, what happens is y'all, when you listen to this man speak so much about Kanye West and how he's stalking this woman and all that he's doing and didn't understand that man was trying to protect his babies. You spoke, and if you did that to my daughter, I would do something about it. Well, you're talking with a forked tongue because something was done to your baby. And when people said, oh, do you speak for all black women? Don't speak for all black women. She's speaking as a black woman for the trauma that black women had. For those of them who connect with it, you connect with it. Because the message that we're giving today is not for everyone. The message that we the, the message that we're trying to share today are for those individuals that are taught are tired of being enslaved, are tired of thinking because I may have to face the wrath of the tribe, I will go along with what's wrong to save my hide mm. the reality is how can a black woman expect protection from her community how can a black woman expect that when you heard what it is that he conveyed and worst of all to give excuses for an individual that continuously calls out people see because we're not here saying that one has to be perfect. We're not sitting here saying that everyone is perfect and we've never made mistakes, but the mistakes that we make, we have to own those mistakes. And in owning those mistakes, it creates again, a level of empathy who we deem for those who we deem have made a mistake. When you hear DL talk, he does not talk empathetically about the individuals. As he said, a reference to Monique when she was on stage performing her job that he eviscerates individuals in the manner that Monique eviscerated him. And what happens is when a black woman decides to stand and fight against a man for the same things that if that man called that man out, it's okay. Come on. Well, and we will sit back. You heard the phone call of Tyler Perry saying, I was wrong and I'm going to make it right. And it hasn't been made right. And guess what? Most people are not up in arms about it. Why? Because of something, because it affects someone so insignificant as a black woman and then be a big black woman on top of that. So for the black women out there that are in support of DL, know that it was a black man that brought it to our attention about that video. Brother Amir Sedan, much and, love to you. And just so that we're clear, because people are saying, oh, well, why would you? You've been on that. We found that out last night. We just got a phone call out of nowhere. From a black man saying he has never seen so many black men attacking black women. And if black men are going to refuse to protect the black woman, then what protection does the black man have? The community's link is weakened due to us allowing the black woman to succumb to the forces that be. And sometimes it's at the hands of the black man. I'm sitting here telling you as a black man <clears throat> that I had the opportunity, the terrible opportunity sorry, of watching my father be physically abusive to my mother beat her down little one i've heard stories about my grandfather doing the same thing so that's generation after generation what i refuse to do is sit back and allow that to happen on my watch so when people see the irregularity of the black man and black woman sitting together let's make it a commonality let's not make it so that it's so odd to see because what she's saying is you are worthy as a black woman of being treated equally. You are worthy as a black woman of being treated fairly. You are worthy of a, as a black woman, not to allow yourself to be beaten and 
allow the beater, the person who violated you to get away with what it is that they've done. You deserve that. And when you have people that are on your side that happen to be of the opposite sex, utilize that relationship because sometimes a woman can't connect with a man in the way that a man can verbalize to another man. What are you doing? What are you doing? And it was a black man that tipped us to that last night. Again, a brother, Amir Sedan, who brought that to our attention because he was tired of the treatment that the black women in the community are getting. And I'll say this before I pass it to you, my love. Yes, Daddy. They are far more black men, Come black on. husbands, black boyfriends, black men, gay, straight, whatever you want. But the whole... There are far more black men that are supportive of the black woman than the powers that be would allow you to know. And they're incensed to know that this has happened. When we say to white people and to the white policemen that we got to call out the bad ones and for what they do and the wrong that they do. We as the black community have to be bold enough to do the same thing. Don't ask somebody to do something that you're not willing to do. See, I want to, I keep saying, I understand it. I keep saying, I understand the conditioning and the fear and traditionally how we've done this, how we continue to do this. And when y'all are saying, Monique, why would you drag his daughter in it? Y'all not listening to the shit. He dragged his daughter he in it when he said it. He told the story. Those are his words. If you go out there, you can see that interview. It's all over. But because I posted it. Because I posted it. On my page. Now y'all are saying, Monique, why are you attacking? Let me tell y'all something. And I want to be so clear about this shit. Because when I see these kind of comments, listen. When I see comments like, you're going to get blackballed again. If that is the case, then so goddamn be it, y'all. If because I'm speaking up and speaking out, but I'm, 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 oh, I was getting ready to say it. I don't like to say juicy words on here because the babies might be watching. But when you start getting in business with real cats... When you start getting in business with real cats, see Curtis 50 Cent Jackson, that's a real cat. See Lee Daniels, that's a real cat. Though we had to go through the mud, baby. But at the end of the day, what he proved himself to be was a stand up black man because a genuine I am sorry, that, that proves yourself to be that genuine stand up black man. So they out there. So for the ones that can't hold their shit, I don't want to be in business with them. Let me be clear. And for you black women, see, this is why I'm a little, I'm a little warm right now, y'all. I'm a little warm. Because see, my daddy was D.L. Hughley. My daddy, even though he apologized, he went to his grave and I still looked at him like you a piece of shit. Because you talked a good game, but when your family needed your protection, you went in your bedroom and you drank yourself to sleep. See, I know that cat. I know him. So when I saw that story and when that brother called and said, let me just give this to y'all. And y'all keep saying, oh, he apologized. He did. But when did an apology erase the trauma? And... That's not as much the issue about the apology Come on. in conjunction with the trauma. And when you say you're bringing his daughter into it, what his daughter is getting right now is someone that's in alignment with her as a black woman who was abused by her brother so that everything she has felt and everything that she feels moving forward, she knows that it's a level of confirmation because no one knows what it is that that sister went through but that sister. And the other individuals who knows what it is to be violated, especially another black woman coming to her aid, that's a level of comfort that oftentimes doesn't happen because again, we in our black community, 
from slavery to right now have been trained, have been conditioned, move forward. You got work to do. Keep that under the hat. You got to be ready for the mall. And then all of a sudden, one day, you break down. Why? Because you're not dealing with it openly and honestly. We as a community have to stop living in secret and be honest enough to speak openly. Because if we don't, we're going to suffer in silence. And then you wake up one day, this person did something to themselves and you didn't know why. You've got, again, people that won beauty pageants and they took themselves out. Why? Don't know. But we can't get better until we have these conversations aloud. I don't want to project the idea that he's a terrible human being, but it is terrible that he doesn't realize as a human being what he said he did to his daughter. And if he is contrite about what he did, or if he is sorry about what he did to his daughter, then show empathy to the other individuals out there. You can have dialogue about anybody you want to have, but there's a respectful way to do it. Because if you notice, I ain't trying to talk about him terribly. I'm not, as a black man, what I think he did and allowed to happen, I don't understand it. But what I'll say is this, we got to talk about it. And I want to address something. And this is the sad shit, y'all. This is the shit we've been brought into. When I hear people, because as I read your comments, I believe I can hear you. Why is he talking? Why is he talking? Because he can. And he needs to. And he needs to. See, what we're trying to show. What we're trying to show is it's okay to trust each other. It's okay to have each other's back in a way, baby, that is so unbreakable. But when you have people like D.O. Hughley that finds a way to make fun of people's love, I want y'all to understand, baby, I'm not attacking D.O. Hughley's family by no means. I love that brother's family. What I'm doing is bringing the light as the character as to who D.O. Hughley is. So for as long as y'all don't want to hear what you really need to be listening to, I didn't put anybody out there. That interview was all over the world. D.L. Hughley told the story. I didn't put anyone out there. Those stories never go away. That's there forever. He shared the story, and I want you to listen to how he shared it. It and was almost a blowover. And if you're wondering why I'm speaking, because I'm not a star, I'm not a celebrity, then you can understand why in your everyday life people look at you, why are you speaking? Mm. And when you're not courageous enough to speak up because people don't think that you are valid enough, you big enough, you a star, and you stay quiet, you've let them win. We don't care who's on our side as long as we're on the side of what's right. If you can prove us wrong, prove us wrong. If you can show that D.L. Hughley hasn't talked trash about people before and after he made that post, then we apologize. But if you can't show that, then you would have to ask yourself, how can a man be betray his daughter by believing a friend that he likes a lot? over the daughter that he's supposed to love, but then feel comfortable talking about other people and the things that they've done wrong. The only way you can do that is by not acknowledging the magnitude of what you've done wrong. Our sweet community. Our sweet community, y'all. And we're watching it. We're watching it. We watching it and all this privacy stuff, all this having in privacy. And there's a list out there of the people they say I had a problem with. Whoopi, Oprah, Tyler, Steve, Will Packer. Um, who else is on that list? Cheryl Underwood, Kim Whitley. Um, it's, quite, it's, it's, it's quite a few people on the list. It might be about 10 people on the list. What I would suggest is get them all together, all of them. 
Let's do a BET town hall meeting. Let's do a meeting publicly. Let's have every last one of them tell them what their problem is with me. And what you'll find is with every last one of them, they try to bully or either talk foolishness and they got it handed back to them and they could not handle it. Get them all together. And they point out all the people that she's had a problem with. But what they fail to mention is the details of why she has a problem with them. Yeah. And why they have a collective problem. Let's delve into the specifics because we as a community, we get caught up and we buy into generalities like a deal memo. People, woo, boom, bang, bang. Oh, he done <laughs> dropped the bomb. He got a nail. He got a nail. A deal memo with no signatures. But y'all going to question her contract because it came from our attorney. But y'all didn't notice that the deal memo came from his agent, not even from a legal stamp, the, the agent. This is what they said that they wanted. That's why we got specific. So if we got to take the heat for saying we love the community so much that we're going to try to tell them the truth. We heard this wild story one time. We heard about this cat so, that took one fish and fed a whole group of people. They, he walked on water. He was for the people. He hated when he saw the, the, the vendors uh, taking advantage of the people. And he did all this good. And he died on the cross. That's We, we heard the story about that. So when you hear about a cat that we ain't came close to in the sense of we ain't not walked on water, we ain't took one fish. Now we took some fish and may have fried it up, but there's enough fish for everybody. Mm -hmm. No miracle. And they put him on the cross. We know we ain't got nothing coming. So we not doing it for any other reason than for the people that are willing to listen. They'll hear it for the people that don't. It's not meant for you. But when you keep getting mistreated, understand it's because you embolden the mistreater to take advantage of you and yours. You know, my, um, and, and thank you for doing this live too. My, I guess my energy has calmed a little because when I was reading my timeline and I was answering some of y'all back, I had to because it was sisters. It was sisters, y'all. It's us saying that our little girls and our babies ain't worthy. It's what? And Miss Spencer, when you say worry about yourself, that is the most selfish act you can do. Because if you worried about yourself just in the sense that you're talking about, that's selfish. But if you're truly w worried about yourself from a, from a humanitarian standpoint, that means you have to concern yourself with others. Because if you don't protect the individuals of the tribe, then there's no tribe to protect and you are a part of the tribe, whether you want to admit it or whether you're not. Get healthy. So, and oh, oh, oh thank you for that word because it just brought me to this. It makes me laugh because it's laughable when I see y'all put, Mo, you need to heal. You need to heal. And Somebody would say, or I'm saying, what is it about me that you don't think I'm healed? Now you're right, there was a time in my life that I needed to heal because I was traumatized, I was damaged, I was hurt. You are so right, my babies. But at this point in my life, that healing feels so good, that's why I talk out loud. See, there was a time when I needed to heal, but I was holding on to secrets. I was holding on to them. And when I start talking out loud, ooh, that healing start feeling so good because I was able to say it out loud and not sleep with it. I was able to put it on stage and not bring it home to my family. So when y'all tell me about what I should and shouldn't say on stage, that's mine. That's mine, baby. And I'm going to say what I want to on that stage because that's also my therapy. You've seen some comedians' lives. Y'all have seen the stories. But some of them took themselves out of here because they just couldn't take it. 
Some of them mistreated their families. They could make the world laugh, but they couldn't make themselves laugh because they was holding on to demons. I ain't holding on to it. I'm going to say it out loud, boldly, and I'm talking about the kind of loud where y'all like, here she go again. Here I go again. Because what I have to do is be fearless for the babies that are fearful and don't believe they have a voice. I'm going to keep on talking, screaming, kicking to make sure that I do my best, that the ones coming after me don't have to scream or kick as loudly. So for the sisters that got a lot to say, especially the ones that know me, you have my number. You have my number. I saw it to it that y'all had my number. See what the black female comedians won't tell you is, I try to give my number to as many as I can to say, if you ever have any questions, if there's anything I can ever guide you on, please don't hesitate to call me. Or just talk about. Or just wanna talk. They won't give you that story. They won't give you that. Well, Kim Whitley was kind enough to go on Comedy Hype and talk about you were a real friend the type of friend that gets to the top of the mountain, as you did when y'all went up, what was that, Laurel Canyon? Runyon, yes, Runyon sir. Canyon. And then you got to the top, and as opposed to waiting for it, you went back down and you gave her your top and you pulled up the mountain. When you have a woman that's decent enough to tell that story, but then they turn around and they attack the individual that was a friend that helped them put that helped pull them up the mountain, you have to ask yourself what type of sickness is being imposed in, on our community? What are we taking? How are we healing? We live in a world where pastors, pastors, preachers, they tell you, if you want prosperity, you gotta pray to God. But their prosperity comes from praying on you. Mm. Now I know people really going to be on up in arms about that because don't take away our God. We're not taking away your God. We're taking the illusions that have been imposed upon you about the things that surround you every day. Be comfortable in the truth because if you don't become comfortable in the truth, then that means you're becoming comfortable on the opposite. That's why you have a problem with what we're doing right now and it's your right. And if you have a problem with the content that we sharing, my sweet baby, click off. Click off. See, here's where we get foolish. And I want to address this too because somebody said they didn't come for that. They came for a comedy show. Well, then you must have been blind and deaf. Because if you look at the video, then people was having a ball. I'm grateful. When I walked out on that stage in Detroit, them beautiful folks stood to their feet. And when I left that stage in Detroit, those beautiful folks stood to their feet. So let me do my show the way I do it. And if you don't like that kind of show, then you would be a baby that would never buy tickets. We're, we're on equal ground. But when you come to my show, I've always talked about my life. And those people welcome themselves into my life. For all those people that y'all got listed, I didn't call not one of them. Every last one of them called on me. So what happens is, my sweet people, when the powers that be, whatever that means, they've gotten so used to praying upon us, because they know we, what you're going to do. You ain't going to do nothing. There are some men, not all, not all, but there are some black men. Again, let me say it, not all, because there are some beautiful black men out there. But there are some black men like D.O. Hughley that like to prey on us. And when you turn it around. And by praying, meaning I can say what I want to say to you. Come on. But I'm going to need you to have empathy for me when the tables are turned. Empathy should be reciprocated both ways. Again, 
There's an old saying in sales. You can say anything you want to say, but it's about the way in which you say it. So when you listen to the way he says it and you listen to a black woman who comes out swinging and then you're mad that a black husband is sitting there next to him because I'm the one that's messing up her career. Let the liquor tell it. But what a, in actuality what's happening is you're hearing someone say, we're going to put the ethics of the way we go about making our money over just chasing a bag. Because there are many of people that have chased the bag, but they got no inner peace. When you got inner peace and then you get the bag, then what do you have? So at the end of the day, we know that we have to run the risk of telling our community, the people that we love, the truth. And when you do that, you run the risk of being disliked by the community because they didn't want to hear it. We appreciate the love from the ones that do. I'm just, you know, I want to think about how I'm going to phrase this. When y'all are saying to me, Monique, you should have just called him. Why? When I hear DL saying he gave me a chance, a chance to do what, DL? You're not in a position to give me a chance, brother. You're not in a position to give me a chance. Why is he not in a position to give you a chance? I'm not. He, what does he do? In addition to that, because when we start speaking about the whole headlining and all that, he would have to be over you in order to give you a chance. Mm. And again, we're gonna show you the bias that the black woman has to deal with. How does a man that was part of the Kings of Comedy, who was considered the opening act, the, the opening act, and there's no shade to the opening act. You need to have them. They set the tone of the show. He was very key to what it is that was the Kings of Comedy. And by all accounts did a great job but we're gonna discount that this man was an opener and monique was the headliner for the queens of comedy and somehow he's above her why so the reason why i'm here is because we know the game is designed to pimp a butterfly mm. in the words of brother kendrick lamar you're trying to pimp the, bit, but, the butterfly. And what I'm saying is as a black man sitting here, respectfully not on my watch. Respectfully not on my watch. And there's many black men out there, as we can see in the comments, by the women and the men who can appreciate a couple. Now, a couple of what? Hey, baby. I don't know. Hey. But can appreciate a couple standing up simply for the community. And let me just say this to y'all so y'all can understand this business. Because I keep saying this foolishness about he gave you a chance when his people told him not to work with you. That's not how this game works. That's not how a promoter will call and a promoter will say, I want this one, this one, and this one. That's what the promoter will say. Right? That's not, and if you want to do the show, you say yay or nay. They've called me about two shows with Dale Hughley. What you need, Daddy, this? Hmm? Two shows. The one was in L.A. Super Bowl weekend. He was on it, then he was off. And this one in Detroit. D.L. Hughley is an artist. That's it. He doesn't have a production. Well, I won't say that. I don't know if I'm having a production. I don't know any That's of that. Necessary. But what he wasn't in a position to do was give me a chance. And is he saying that just because he's a man? I want y'all to hear this, y'all. People that do a show with me, I don't give them a chance. That's the promoter. The promoter is paying them. The promoter is paying them. I, it's not, I'm not giving you a chance. Now, there are some promoters will say, Monique, who would you like on the show with you? Well, your contract allows that. For me to say, let me, this is who I want. But to say you were giving me a chance, how you, DL, watch your mouth, brother. Because you selling the community fluff. What position were you in to give me a chance? When you were in a, a position to give someone a chance to protect them, that's not the chance you took. And someone could argue, in the world of business today, 
if you can't provide a contract, if you don't have paperwork and a paper trail showing that you earn money, the world we live in today, people could construe that as getting paid under the table. So if you see somebody get paid on the table, but they calling you out because you actually have a contract. And I'm not saying that's what it is with the F. What I'm saying is, where's the contract and why do you handle it in that way from a business standpoint? You see what I'm saying? Because when you start talking poorly about people, one thing leads to another. You start mm -hmm. peeling the banana back. And black women, if you start getting the treatment and the protection that you sometimes falsely try to put on a black man, then our black community would appreciate itself even more. And for the folks that say, I'm difficult to work with, don't y'all find it strange none of them will face me? So for the cowards that's in here, they're saying, but you're difficult to work with. Well, number one, you've never worked with me. But number two, why won't any of those people face me? Why won't any of them say, this is what the difficulty was? Because what they do is bank on our community just going along with the foolishness. And we oblige. We jump right on the bandwagon. That's why they're able to exploit us. That's why they're able to take advantage of us. Because what they know is they ain't going to stand together. And when in the history of entertainment or anything else, have there been a barrage of black women trying to exploit society as we know it? The black woman has been the bearer of protection and services for the white man, the white woman, a black man. And as I've said before, Who's been the one that's looked out for her historically? She's had to look out for herself and black women get looked out for so little that it is, it appears to be an egregious act when a black woman says, I've got to stand up for myself. And a black ass husband gonna sit there right with him. Daddy, Come on daddy, now, daddy, 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 that nigga. When y'all make comments about why didn't you address the promoter? Again, y'all wasn't listening. The first thing I said on stage was the promoter was raggedy. That's the first thing I said. That's the first thing I said, that the promoter was raggedy. That's the first thing I said. But y'all skipped over that. See, this is the part that's really disheartening. I like to get down with my folks. I like to get down with the black promoters that call because I know how hard it is for the black promoters. So when they call, I take it as an honor and I like to get down with them. Now, do we always run into the ones that's on the up and up? Not always. But then do we run into the ones that lay it out? See that show I did in Philly? His name was Raymond Anthony, right? Raymond Anthony, I did a show at the Keswick in Philly the night before Detroit. When I tell you, baby, they had it laid out. His mama was there. And when you get the food from mama, his mama made that food. Then family, family, family. Then when I get upstairs, there's a caterer upstairs that then catered the food and laid it out. I mean, it was just boom, 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 laid it out. When I get to Detroit and I get upstairs to my dressing room, if I could have shown y'all what the food looked like, it looked like it was picked over, touched with, messed around, cold, no heat to it, no nothing. The, 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 there's a lunch meat tray that comes in there because the, some of the team like that lunch meat. It, I said, we can't even eat that. It was so thrown together. And that was a black man, y'all, with his daughters. So I started out that the promoters was raggedy. That's how I started that out. So again, please do us a favor. Take the time out to listen to what's being said and not just what you want to hear. Now, I don't say that in judgment because there was a time I was guilty of that. There was a time Sydney and I would have conversations and I would repeat back what I thought I heard. And he would say, that's not what I said. 
That's not what I said, but that's what I wanted to hear. That's what I wanted to make it to be. And he would say, repeat back exactly what I said to you. And then when I repeat back exactly what he said to me, now I got to stand there and say, that's not what I brought down. That's what you said, but I repeated what I wanted to hear. So I understand it. And Ms. All right, when you say, why did you do the show with him? When we saw that it was seemingly becoming a problem, Monique said, hey, listen, let DL do this thing. I don't need to be on that show. Give it to him. If he got a problem with me, the promoters said, what was the episode from Good Times? When they had the bad food and they had to go down to the supermarket. Yes. They brought the FDA guy in and he said, well, I'll taste it. Oh, no, 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 no. They wanted Monique to be on the show. So she tried to bow out gracefully. Tried mm -hmm. to bow gracefully. Tried to avoid any conflict. But when the promoter calls and says the reason why she has to go on to our attorney, because our attorney called in the middle of the show. When that happened, the promoter said, well, DL is not even in the building yet. So that means that he was late for the show based upon what the promoter said. That's not what we said. That's what the promoter said to our attorney. He wasn't even in the building, which some would argue that that speaks to professionalism if that is in fact true. Okay. But again, you don't hear the giving because what Monique did was she put her ego to the side and said, I'm not going to deprive the people of a show and the flow of the show because I'm being done wrong. No, they going to get what they supposed to get. But so is DL. But so is DL. And that, and when y'all say, what's the name of the promoters? If you go through and you look at the information, it's right there. I believe, I believe it's New Day, but look at it for yourself. The name of the promoters is right there on the run of shows. You can see it. See, once again, y'all, remember what they would say about us. If you want to give them some information, put it in a book. If you want to hide information. If you want to hide the information, put it in a book because they won't open it up. They'll just take somebody's word. Y'all just willing to take this man's word and not do your homework and not do your homework. So again, as I read some of these messages in here, this is the promoter is not the issue. You are, listen, the promoter was an issue. It was. However, so was D.O. Hughley. And the issue happened before. It happened before, y'all. D.O. Hughley, again, was going to get his ass handed to him because he's always had so much to say. And then today when I did the post, let me go back for the newcomers. When I did the post, it was intentional. Not when y'all say, you're traumatizing this baby. No, he already put it out there. It's already out there, babies. What I did and what we did was said, look at the character of the person, but y'all don't want to see that, but y'all want to give me a paper. Actions That's a little amazing. of the person. The a I'm sorry, the actions of the person, you want to keep overriding it. So once again, once again, any of the people that's on the list that whomever keeps posting it and putting it out there, we're willing to sit down with all of them. And when y'all say, why are y'all having this conversation? Because we need it. We need it as a community, brothers and sisters. You don't see the crumbling. You don't see the tear down of us. You don't see what's happening in our educational system with our babies. You don't see what's happening out there in our neighborhoods because we need it. We need it. If you don't feel like we need it, then damn it, you're part of the problem. We need to have these conversations and stop running from them and stop wanting to do it in private. You know how many times we've been taken advantage of in private? In private? That's where the rape happens. See, I've tried to have conversations in private. And when I had the conversation in private with a man named Tyler Perry, however, we had to record it because had I told y'all what he said and I didn't have his voice, y'all would have said, I don't believe it. And even after I have the black man's voice saying what he did was wrong, y'all still saying, why would you record him? Why would you record him? And y'all wonder why they don't have to pay us fairly. You wonder why, why they don't. 
why they don't pay us fairly. Because we sit there and we say, why would you record the rapist? Why would you record the violator? That's the part that frustrates me with us, y'all. That's the part that makes me say, let me try to talk to my babies the best way I can. And if this is how I can reach y'all, damn it, this time I'm reach y'all. If this is how we can get out, try to get into our babies and talk as best we can, then this is what we're going to do. This is what we're going to do. See, if you notice, all the people on the list, tell me about the conversations they're having with the community. Tell me about the conversations that they're saying we got to do better. Tell me about the conversations that they're saying stick together. Tell me about the conversations that they're having with us saying we want you to have a healthy, healthy, happy marriage. Tell me about them conversations, y'all. The people you got on that list talk about boss stuff. Talk about being moguls. Talk about, listen. They talk about the airports that's flying into their home, but tell me about the ones that's talking about hold your head up. Tell me about the ones saying you got to have integrity and pride. Tell me about it. And y'all want to tell me about my performance on stage? All of y'all should be doing lives. All of y'all should be trying to reach just at least if you can get to one. Y'all get to questioning me about things. That when you have stopped to have the conversation, then you want to backpedal on what you think you're saying to me. Yeah, I stand firm on the things I've said. When y'all want to say, and you, and you want to bring up bonnets, yeah, I did. And when I saw a beautiful sister at the airport in Atlanta, we actually took a picture together. She had on a bonnet. That baby was so chocolate and so beautiful. I had to walk up to her and say, why ever would you want to hide all your beauty? And when that sweet baby came out that bathroom and you saw that beautiful natural hairstyle on that sweet sister and with tears in her eyes and tears in mine, we held on to each other. So I'm not backing up. I'm not being quiet. I don't care if it's an all boys club. I don't care if the boys get together and want to support what they know is wrong. Yeah, I feel sorry for all of your wives. And all of your daughters and all of your children, if you know you're supporting something that you know is wrong. And what my husband has always said to me, when you know you support what's wrong, you will succumb to what you support. So if y'all want me to go away and be quiet, don't come to where I play. Don't come to where I play. But if you come to where I play, I'm going to play the way I want to play. For those of you who say, oh, 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 here she, 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 she get ready to take herself there. There they go again. For my community, <laughs> I'll take myself there. It's a damn shame that you won't. And part of the reason for that is because when you know what it is to be violated and nobody has your back, you know you got to fight the fight sometimes alone. But when you get in a position that you can make some noise, because at one time, her voice was deemed as being irrelevant. When she got to Hollywood, she was told that big, cute, sexy thing you doing, that ain't going to work. Academy Award and 32 years of common in the game and a 22 year, 23 year running sitcom says differently. And this conversation is really us saying to the folks out there, believe what you're seeing, believe it. And when you see the truth, don't be afraid to stand up against it. Because if you don't, the lie, it's going to sit you down. It's going to come back to get you. Mm. And when you, somebody said, Monique, you the problem. You damn right. You damn right I'm the problem. You damn right I'm the problem. No, they said it's not you, it's him. He's the problem. No, one this baby if this baby keep putting it in here, baby. Monique, you the problem. You are the problem. Well let me address it. You damn right I'm the problem. I'm the problem because I won't let you push. I'm the problem because I won't let you bully. So I'm okay with being the problem. It's okay. One time my husband said to me, Mama, don't run from people's words. Let them have what they're saying. You're right. 
I will agree to that. I am the problem. Because I but won't. why? Because I won't let you push and bully. Because I won't let you take advantage. I won't let you exploit. I won't let you do that, my babies. So again, my sweetnesses, we want to thank y'all for giving us your time. Even the ones that stayed in here the whole time <laughs> and said, we the problem. What we doing? You love us so much that you stayed. Miss Things, thank you. We're going to be the fucking problems. That's right. Is that what that baby she girl said? She said, be the problem, sis. Hey! Be the problem. We love you, sweet babies. For free. Now listen, June 18th, in Raleigh, North Carolina, at the Duke Energy Center. Give it to him. <laughs> at the Duke Energy Center. But wait a minute, before I give it to him, can I just say something real quick? It's because it's somebody true. just said, when you going to roast Corey Holcomb? I'm not. Corey Holcomb has been doing Corey Holcomb, baby, for years, I think. So, I'm, I'm, I'm cool with Corey Holcomb. Get yours, baby. Get yours. D.L. Hughley, on the other hand, that's a different story. So, again, June 18th, Duke Energy Center, Raleigh, North Carolina. I told y'all I leave the stage to stage, right? <laughs> and that stage... We're going to put it on the stage. So, I love y'all. And let me say this too. I love D.L. Hughley. We love D.L. Hughley. We love Corey Holcomb. We love all the black female comedians. We love us. We love us. We're in into the calling out game. We just want to call you up. That's all. So, my sweet babies... Know that this old girl right here and this old guy right here, we love us for real. Thank y'all for tuning in.